Hi everyone, and welcome back to another past paper video from the AnimeChem Tutor. Today's past paper is taken from the year 2016. So let us begin. Dilute sulfuric acid is the electrolyte used in car batteries. Remy obtained a sample of this electrolyte from a car battery and carried out an investigation using electrolysis in the laboratory. The first question says, define the term anion. An anion is defined as an atom or polyatoms that received electron or electrons to become a negatively charged ion. Part two says, what anion will be present in a sample of this electrolyte? The sulfate anion, and the hydroxide anion, given the fact that the solution is dilute sulfuric acid. Let us look at part three of the question. Draw a clearly labeled line diagram to represent an electrolytic cell. And it is given as so let us add the labels. Here is the anode, the cathode, the electrolytic solution of copper sulfate, for example, the beaker that holds the chemical reaction, the flow of electrons from anode to the cathode, the battery, that kickstarts the chemical process. Now, inside the beaker, the ions are the sulfate ions, the copper ions, the hydroxonium ions, also known as H, and the hydroxide ions. At the anode, we know that oxidation takes place at the, there and reduction takes place at the cathode. Part B of the question says, during the electrolysis of the acidified water, hydrogen is produced at the cathode. The equation for the formation of hydrogen is given as this right here. Now, they want you to calculate the volume of hydrogen gas liberated at STP standard temperature and pressure if a current of 965 amperes is passed through the circuit for one hour. So let us see what we have. First, we need to find the quantity of electricity, which is given as amperes multiplied by time. Time is usually given in seconds. However, we have one hour here, so we need to convert that hour to seconds. So 60 multiplied by 60 give us 3,600 seconds. Then that is multiplied by 965 amperes, which produces 3.474 million coulombs. And that's a, a large number, and, it's, and it may be a bit untidy to work with. So to convert something to, to, to convert this number to something that is easier to work with, we simply divide by 96,500 to get 36 Faraday. This number here is where 96,500 coulombs equal to one Faraday. At STP, we know that one mole of hydrogen has a volume of 22.4 liters. Therefore, two Faradays produces one mole of hydrogen. That has a volume of 22.4 liters at STP. So what that is saying, just look at the equation. It requires two Faradays to take these two electrons to the cathode where they 
hydroxonium ion RH plus will pick it up to produce hydrogen gas. Two Faradays is needed to do two Faradays are needed to carry out that process. Now we know that so what volume of hydrogen at STP will produce 36 Faradays? We know that two Faradays equal to 22.4 liters of hydrogen. Therefore, 36 Faradays will produce how much liter or how many liters of hydrogen gas? We don't know, so we call that X. Then we cross multiply and then solve for X. Uh, Faraday's cancer Faraday's, so X equal to 403.2 liters of hydrogen produced at the cathode. Let us look at the next question. Part C says, Remy also wants to purify an impure nickel sample using electrolysis. Suggest how he could modify the line diagram drawn in A part 3 in order to achieve this. And state one observation that would be expected. So the line diagram is modified and animated as you can see here. So let us look at the modifications. The modifications are the anode is made of the impure nickel. The cathode is made of pure nickel. The electrolytic solution is aqueous nickel sulfate. So what are the observations? I've given a few. The mass of the anode is reduced in size as it is eaten out and the impurities removed. The mass of the cathode increases in size as the nickel solid deposited on it. The impurities from the anode fall to the bottom of the beaker. And all of that you can see taking place here. So the battery pulled the two electrons from the anode and carried that, and it is taken around the circuit to the cathode where the nickel 2 plus ions picked up those two electrons to form nickel solid as you can see they are deposited onto the to, to the cathode where the cathode increase in mass and then the reduction is taking place at the cathode oxidation is taking place at the anode the, two elect the nickel gave up the two electrons to form nickel 2 plus in solution. So we can see the nickel 2 plus losing the electron to form nickel 2 plus ions. Those nickel 2 plus ions then move to the cathode to become, to be reduced or to undergo reduction. Notice that these ions, the sulfate ions, the hydroxide ions, the hydroxonium ions do not take part in this purification process because the electrodes are active and so it requires less energy to break down the nickel solid into nickel 2 plus and to and for the nickel 2 plus ions to be reduced i hope you understand and thank you for watching and see you soon